What is knock pinging detonation or pre-ignition? If you have been in the tuning scene for some amount of time and tuning your car or have watched some of my videos, you might have come across this term and today I'm going to explain this finally. This video is supported by Fowler Tuning who provided us with a knock monitoring device, the Fowler Knock Detective. So in these videos that are about not only what knock is, but also we are going to look into knock tuning uh, in one of our videos in the ECU tuning series, we are going to use this tool to look at our knock or what our engine is actually doing and see how we can prevent detonation ping or knock from happening. How this tool works, I'm going to tell you later in this video. First of all, what is knock, what is pinging, what is pre-detonation, pre-ignition or whatever you want to call it. There are a lot of words for the ignition process that happens in a manner which could damage your engine. In your engine, the normal ignition process would be happening at a set amount of degrees or in the engine's rotation before the engine or the piston reaches the most top point of the cylinder. So top dead center that would be. Top dead center would be zero degrees of ignition timing. If you would fire the spark plug at that point, that would be TDC. In most cases of engines, when an engine is running, the ignition is actually happening a predetermined amount of degrees before top dead center. That is called ignition advance. On idle, your car may run between 10 or 15 degrees ignition advance or under load may run between uh, 25 and 35 degrees if it's a NA engine, so naturally aspirated, or a amount lower when the engine is turbo, for example, because due to a higher cylinder pressure, that amount of ignition advance has to be lowered. If you want to know what ignition advance is, and specifically a explanation for that, watch the last video about ignition advance on my channel where I explained everything about that. So where does knock come in? Well, knock is basically happening when you put too much ignition advance into your engine. So when you try to fire the spark plug too soon, and the cylinder pressure reaches a point where either at some points in the combustion chamber due to heat or excessive pressure, the mixture can ignite itself or the flame front behaves differently than it should be. Normally, the flame front should originate from the spark plug and grow smoothly through the combustion chamber and be at the highest cylinder pressure when the piston is about to go down again. And that would be in theory ideal and where it would make the most power. In this case, there are a few ways which uh, or how this can actually happen. First of all is pinging, which is a very light form of knock. And that is basically when in the combustion chamber, while your spark plug is firing on in other points in the ignition chamber or in the combustion chamber, there is actually also some small ignitions happening. And that might cause uneven burning of the fuel or air fuel mixture. And that might hinder performance and the correct mixing of the air fuel mixture. This isn't too terrible and a lot of cars actually run that way because they are just in most cases modern issues run their timing over advanced and turn it back down when they see ignition so there's always going to be a little amount of pinging happening so that's not going to decrease performance or anything or cause a lot of harm to your engine but that's not too terrible this is going to sound i also have a few sound clips going to sound something like this This would be what you hear when you would use that uh, 
knock detective or for example dead cans when tuning. And then there's actual knock. This is just a more um, pronounced form of this that may start on for example an exhaust valve because exhaust valves tend to get really hot as the exhaust gases pass through them obviously and if they are really hot on and maybe there are carbon deposits on there those carbon deposits can actually start to glow and self-ignite the mixture when the maximum cylinder pressure isn't reached and actually the frame flame front is not at that point yet so it might start even earlier than with pinging so this will be much more detrimental to the engine because it starts earlier and therefore actuates a lot more pressure on everything in the combustion chamber also the, not only is there more pressure but also there is a lot more heat because the pressure is rising much quicker and therefore the heat is much bigger and this is why knock can cause melting in pistons and because it's basically little explosions it also on the piston looks like little marbles hit the piston at a very high speed so because it's basically like as i said explosions happening in your combustion chamber and therefore damaging your pistons the heat also causes the piston to flare up and kind of start to melt while there might not be any real damage to the piston you can st start to see when you for example take off the head that the surface finish of the piston got really rough and that's the first indicator that either you ran into knock or your combustion chamber temperatures were very high the same thing can be seen on spark plugs and for example also on the conrod bearings because on the ignition angle or at the point where it was knocking it actually it's a lot of force down on the rod and therefore at those timing or at those degrees at the advance where that knock was taking place for example if it was taking place at 35 degrees uh, of ignition advance you would actually see damage or damaged spots on the bearing at an angle of about 35 degrees because on that angle it was pushing down a lot more than it actually should have and maybe was splitting that oil film or over pressurizing that oil film and basically contacting the metal which shouldn't happen obviously so that can lead to catastrophic engine failure even after a relatively short period of time um, while knocking an engine with forged pistons is much more resistant to that because forged pistons are a lot stronger so they take a lot more abuse than forged uh, than cast stock pistons but they are still not indestructible so you still have to watch out but on a stock engine with cast pistons it's much more important to keep your knock in check the last thing there is or the last stage would be pre-ignition this is most commonly found on direct injection cars or direct injection engines and that is due to them running relatively high compression ratios a direct injected turbo engine is usually running 10 0.0 to 1 or more compression ratio while a turbo engine that is a port injected is usually running 9.5 or less so there's that as a difference so there's already a higher combustion chamber pressure and also they are usually running a little leaner because the fuel is di directly injected into the combustion chamber so they can run leaner as it's much more precise and because of that the risk of pre-ignition is much much larger pre-ignition is basically the mixture igniting before the spark plug even fires and this can instantly kill your engine this can be seen for example in the Toyota G16 engines, the three-cylinder 1.6 liter in the Yaris or in the Corolla. Those engines suffered a lot of pre-ignition failures also because they had some issues with piston rings where a lot of oil was getting into the combustion chamber and oil also uh, lowers the octane rating of fuel or the air fuel mixture and therefore promotes uh, pre-ignition or pr promotes knock. There's special oil that has 
low speed pre-ignition uh, inhibitors that actually make the effects of that less pronounced but still there is risk what can you do about that well for pinging and knock there is the way to raise the octane of your fuel you are using for example if you will use european 95 uh, fuel and you are experiencing not knock or pinging you can just switch to 98 or 100 octane and that will most likely get better if not go away completely the same goes for pre-ignition although pre-ignition can be if it's under full load as so severe that you aren't able to get rid of it a hundred percent with just higher octane fuel you might need to run a catch can to get oil vapors out of the engine bay because again those lower the octane rating and in addition to that you might want to run a water or water meth injection kit so that you can again raise the octane rating of your fuel or of your air fuel mixture that's basically the fuel side of things the other things are you can use a less advanced ignition map or ignition uh, angle so that you are just making less power and running less ignition angle running less boost and also running colder air intake temps so for example a bigger intercooler and more efficient intercooler that will work also because colder air entering the engine while it might be more dense it is less prone to cause knock in the engine there's also something to be had about exhaust back pressure so modifying the exhaust manifold turbine housing or exhaust so downpipe to get less back pressure behind the head because then you will not force as much exhaust gas back into the engine and that will also help a lot but how can you monitor your car or monitor your engine so that you know for sure that there is no knock happening or no pinging happening on a stock ECU well you only can monitor it because if you don't have a tool to flash or to modify your software you are able to monitor it with some logging software for example in uh, the vw world you can log with uh, vcds and uh, there you can actually see how much ignition timing your knock sensors are pulling so this is based on the knock sensors and what they are seeing or rather what they are pulling on your engine as far as ignition timing goes so you cannot directly notice law uh, knock itself a method that would be able to do that is you could use a set of dead cans where you basically are using a similar way like a stethoscope works but just hooked up to your engine basically and a hose hooked into some headphones uh, in the cabin but that's a bit unwieldy and that's where the product i showed you in the beginning comes in a knock detective or knock monitoring device that works similar like on your ecu it just monitors the knock but you could do that also by yourself if you just want to make sure you can hook up a knock sensor to a device that actually will output a visual indicator or also output audio to headphones and you will be able to monitor the knock with that device for yourself so you can hear the knock you can see the knock if anything is happening that you actually don't want to and you can actually abort the pull you are doing or you can tune your engine to the ignition timing that it actually needs and prevent knock that way there's also the possibility if you have a standalone ecu to use a knock output from this or other devices to get into your standalone ecu and set up a knock detection that way so you can have basically two safeties you can have the knock safety in your ecu itself and in addition to that you can also see if any knock is happening or if anything is happening within your engine that you don't want to so now that you know how knock works what knock is and how to prevent it keep your eyes out for our next videos in our ecu tuning guide where i show you how to tune your engine according to knock control and how to 
look for that, how to tune the ignition table with a device that is able to monitor knock by itself. I already did that on an NA engine with some dead cans, but that's not as precise. And on NA engines, on a lot of them, you will actually not experience a lot of knock and will not have that many issues because NA engines don't experience that high of a, of a combustion chamber pressure. So that's not really that big of a deal. But under a turbo application, that's much more interesting and also much more important. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram. As always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.